Welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're kicking straight off with this one and getting the wheels painted. So it's the same as we've been doing before. A bit of Tamiya rubber black, which is XF85. Uh, paint all of the rims and the areas where the tyres are. And then we're going to fill them in with the actual colour that we're going to paint the tank with. So for this, I'm going to do my own mix uh, using XF62 olive drab with a dash of XF60 which is the dark yellow. Now, um, you can you can go to town with this or you can just use XF62 straight out of the pot. I like to add a touch of yellow to it uh, just to change it up a bit. And we were seeing there rapid thinners as well, which is something else I like to use now and again with the Tamiya paints. Um, it's just changing it up and trying to show you a few more different things. Of course, you could just use XF62 mixed with X20A thinners like we've done right at the start or you could step it up and add some lacquer thinner which this is uh, the rapid thinner is only different to what we were using in the last video with the churchill where i used the leveling thinner so rapid thinner gases off very quick so it gives you quite a matte finish uh, but it does also if the paint's not smooth it can give you a rough texture so you need to be careful with that uh, whereas this the leveling thinner has a slower drying time so it's, it's basically a retarder which means the paint doesn't go off quite as quick. And then that does tend to give you a smoother, more level finish. So that's the two ways around it. Um, you can see here that that, that colour has a nice yellow kind of tone to it. And that's what the XF60 does. That's how it helps it. And um, after painting the turret, we're back to the wheels once the rubber is dried. And just using the trusty wheel mask, uh, sliding it through there. And that gives us a sharp edge to the tyres, much like we've done in the previous videos. And there are all the wheels done. The idler doesn't have a rubber rim, so this is just the road wheels. So I think we've got uh, 12 road wheels all together. So uh, painted up the top hole and let that dry a little bit. And because the green is, it's, it's got, green is a difficult color. It tends to be a little bit see-through in my experience. Uh, so you have to be sure that you've, you've got it completely covered. So for that, as we've got a gray undercoat, what I like to do is spray it all over with the green in a way that I think I've covered most areas. Let that sort of dry off for a little bit, give it sort of five minutes, and then you'll start to see if any of the grey is showing through. So then you can go back over and um, hit some of the areas where you think the paint's a little bit thin or, or some of the grey is showing through, and then you can be sure you've covered it. You don't want to then get down into the weathering process and realise you've got areas where a bit of the undercoat's showing through. So that's everything uh, painted up there and just showing you here that I am using a spray booth for all of this and a respirator and that's the correct respirator. So I've got A2 filters in that uh, and also particulate filters. So I've got A2 vapor filters and then they've got particulate filters on them as well. And it's very important to cover the safety aspect. You know, we don't want to get into trouble just by making models. So if you're spraying paint in a small room, you want to have it vented out of the room if you can with a spray booth. And you also want to be wearing a spray mask and not just a dust mask. It wants to be the proper spray mask and you can find that out online. I'm no expert, so um, check out 3M and their website and follow their guidance for, for what it is you'll be spraying. So now we'd, it's time to actually put the wheels on. You can see why we left it so that you could take them off because you can get such a good definition between the tyre. You would just wouldn't have been able to do this if they were painted on. You would have had to brush paint it. It wouldn't be sharp. And it looks like it's a little bit of a... Um, a pain to get them on but it's not it, you just gotta bend one arm slide it in get it locked in as soon as it's in there they roll around and, and you're good to go and just make sure they're leveled up everything's all glued on there now with the sprocket and the idler as we knew from uh, testing the tracks um it's all all fixed in position now which is uh, no problem so on to the uh, decals now for this i have cut around them again so I've cut right around the carrier film of the 1.5 and the 2, and I would advise not doing that, uh, because as you can see, one of them slipped straight off just in the water, and we start to get into a bit of a pickle here, <laughs> and this can be a problem. So uh, this is where you'll start to get decals coiling up on themselves, and I didn't cut around the centre of the large triangle that goes on the turret, and, and it's no problem. You can't see any carrier film or anything like that. So... Um, 
these are probably a good candidate not to cut around the carry film because they seem a bit delicate and you can see the trouble I'm having unfurling this too and we haven't even got started yet this is just by putting it in the water so um, I do push my luck with decals I would advise you don't uh, because um, you know if you destroy this you're going to have to do the other scheme and then you might already be set up to be doing a Soviet one so it is all um, asking for trouble and pain now you can see, I may have even split the two there. No, it's not, it's wrinkled, but yeah, it, it ain't far off. Uh, so um, you want to be careful. So now applying them to the vehicle, I've put on some micro set. And you may have noticed here that we've not put a gloss coat on. And now these are going straight onto a matte coat. This is straight onto the acrylic paint. No messing about. There's nothing being added. There's no barrier coat, nothing. So just trying to show you that you don't need to have gloss coats. Uh, it's, a, it's something that comes from the age old time of modeling. What the pros and cons are, you'd have to work out for yourself, but there is a um, feeling that you can only apply uh, decals, decals, over a gloss coat. And if you don't, you're gonna get silvering. Um, that's not the case. Uh, the, the gloss coat doesn't really, it, it gives you a chance a better chance of not getting silvering, I, I guess, because if you've got very rough matte paint and you put a gloss coat over it, it is going to be slightly smoother, but you're still going to get uh, silvering if the coat underneath it is actually rough. So what we've done here, how do I put this in context? So we've got a rough surface, we've got a cast textured surface but it's a, it's it's smooth if you if you know what i mean so it's it's rough by its nature but the actual in in the model sense the surface is is smooth even though it's bubbled that's fine so you'll have lots of uh, raised bits and divil and low bits which will show through the decal the decal will go into that much like a panel line if you think of it like that then we've got some matte paint over the top if you think of that as being a very smooth layer over the top of that texture. It's all still smooth. So it's all showing the initial texture through. It's not like we've added another layer of rough paint over the cast texture, which gives us lots of lots of rough roughness as well. That is then when we would have quite a higher chance of having silvering. So by ensuring we've got a very smooth paint layer, layer over the initial surface, it actually means that we don't need to use um, a gloss coat because it's not really going to um, help us. It's, it's not going to add anything. It's going to add another layer of paint onto the model and it's going to make the surface shiny, which isn't ideal. So eliminating all of that means that we've still got that basic paint layer and that gives us much more opportunity to add some weathering fun to it, if you know what I mean. We can work with the textures and we can, we can work with what's there and we don't have to worry about adding yet another matte coat and then dealing with that. We start to get natural kind of, we start to get a natural patina showing through the paint and it looks quite good. Now, with all that said, you could not seal in your decals, right? Um, you could go straight from this scenario, from, from the decals and weather straight over them. I do here put a final matte coat over just the decal areas. Um, and I do, well, I actually matte coat the whole vehicle, but you don't have to. So you want to trial with these. Um, the trouble is, if you haven't got your decals totally down, you can get stuff underneath them and that can be an issue. So you, you want to just play with the idea. But what I'm hoping to show from this point of view is that you don't have to put a gloss coat down. You can do it without getting silvering. Something to think about. Um, it's good to try new techniques and, you know, don't be precious over every single model. That's another thing I hope I'm showing with this series is um, try new things. And if, you, you know, this is a £20 model, it's been brilliant assembling the thing. And if we then try a new technique and it uh, causes a bit of an issue at the end that we didn't really want, it's not the end of the world, is it? I mean, you know, we've learned a huge amount going through, finish it anyway with its flaws. It's something you can look back on in the future and think, ah, yes, right, I've learned how to uh, correct that. And um, that would be my advice. So, you know, try these things. If you think you've always should use a gloss coat, 
maybe on your next model don't put a gloss coat down try and get a very smooth paint layer down using some of these lacquer thinners maybe sanding the paint a little bit as well just to smooth it down and see how that works for you um, i've talked all the way over adding the tracks there but it's very much what we did in the first uh, part all i'm now doing is just adding some cocktail sticks and some wedges in and along that top run to make sure it beds down onto the top of the uh, return rollers which it does we had done all the work in the previous video um, making sure it was lined up so all i'm doing here is clamping it down and i have used some super glue in some areas to get that fixing point because the the, the glue plastic glue hasn't really got enough holding ability and if the um, tracks still want to spring away, you need the super glue just to hold it there and then you can fix the tracks with plastic glue at the other areas. Now with the exhaust here, I'm just using some Tamiya. Um, this is XF79 and I'm just stippling it on to give a rough texture and that's over what we've already put there, which is some cast texture on it. Um, again, don't um, lose sleep over this bit because you really can barely see it. You've got to look up at the back of the vehicle. And even then, you can't see very much but you know it's an interesting technique to do and some of these exhausts do sit right on the back of some vehicles and they're, they're quite prominent so again it's another technique i'm trying just to see how it works um and it's pretty good there are better ways around it i think probably better to airbrush over area that's had the mr surfacer technique added to it and uh, next up we're looking at the tools so what i've done here is painted them off the vehicle i've sprayed the parts that are where the, the clamps and the clasps are and then i've hand painted the tools so all of the metal bits are painted with rubber black and then the handles were painted with dark yellow xf60 now we're going to apply them to the vehicle and then that's when we do the the oil burnt umber wash uh over the wood just to give it a well wood texture i suppose I'm using um, extra thin here, but you could also use uh, probably PVA glue as well if you don't want to get some, you don't want to get the glue wicking around, or super glue if you're um, very good at using super glue. <laughs> Sometimes that can be a bit of an issue. So what I'm saying here is I've just made a mark with the Tamiya extra thin by trying to get it underneath that shovel. Um, I don't mind that because I know I can work with it in the, in the weathering, but if you want a very, very clean finish, PVA glue is probably fine to hold these on because they're not going to take a lot of um, messing about once they're on the vehicle. And now just painting the silver parts of the track where it, it, it touches the ground, so they'd be polished metal. And I'm using the fantastic Mr. Colour number 8 again. So this is a lacquer paint, so with that, when you're brush painting it, it will eat through any paint that's underneath it, uh, just by the very nature of it being lacquer. So don't go scrubbing it. You know, you want to paint it on in, in one go if you can. And you only want to get the high points, the parts that are going to touch the surface. And that's what will give them a very polished look. And we've seen these tracks in the um, video with the pictures I took at Bovington. You can see how they look very much like that. Blackened underneath and then very high polished still where it touches the ground. And now it's time for weathering. So what we've got here is um, I've put a very light matte coat over the model here just to seal in the decals, a few other bits. Not very much at all. I'm not trying to get a matte finish from it. All I'm trying to do is just seal in around the decals and then just give a, a once over the rest of the model just to kind of blend that in and tie everything together. And it actually leaves a rather shiny surface because of the the products i'm using i think for this it was tamiya xf86 that is a matte coat but if you put it on very thin with mr leveling thinner it won't give you a very dusty matte finish it will give you quite a sort of satin finish and that's what i like to go for and then the oils that we then apply in the weathering process is what will give you the matte finish and it, it gives a very natural look so that's something i'm, I'm trying to move towards and, and try not to get my final finish from a varnish and certainly not not varnishing once the oils are on the the finish from the oils is the actual finish that i want for the model and it, it gives a very very natural look and um it's it's a good way to go and we're, we'll start sort of perfecting this as we go forward um an important thing here before we start messing about with oils is any mask or any type of latex uh 
masking that you've got used on a model take that off because the thinners in oils uh, it must be in like an enamel based product or something like that it will just it just melts it and it, it gets all nasty so it's good to get that out of the way before it's affected because it it's hard to get it off whereas when it's being its own thing a latex uh, mask it will just peel straight off so on this um large piece of steel here at the front what we're doing is just blending all of that in we're adding some washes letting them naturally run down and if you think doing a, a sort of rain streaking effect and then we're just adding some um, more runs and blending that in with a wide flat brush just basically working on what we've done before and just trying to step it up a gear and ju you just want to do what feels natural you, you don't want to sit there and think right i have to add a gloss coat then i've got to add a filter and i've got to do a pin wash then i've got to do a wash then i've got to do chipping etc 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 there is no right or wrong there is no magic list that you need to follow and there's no sequence just mix it up see what happens sometimes i like to do a a pin wash and then um another delicate wash maybe even put on some fuel stains and then i decide i'm going to give the whole thing a filter because the color's not looking right or i'm going to give it um a wash like i've done here i've gone over the whole model now that's why it's got that sort of wet look and given it a wash it doesn't affect anything as it dries and as it pulls away what you'll find is it will blend in with the pin wash um the pin wash will already still be there but the wash that you've put over which here was a green wash that i just went over the whole thing and just mixed it up in the pot um it just brings it all together and now we're going in with some reddish browns which actually works quite well on green i, I find the olive drab can be a bit tricky um so mixing up um uh, a, a wash based around the burnt sienna which gives you that kind of red orangey brown and then working that back to being darker or lighter by using um, a lighter brown or white or some of the gray or then taking that darker with raw umber or black with the oils um, that then shifts the tone a little bit so all i'm trying to do here is work this all of this in to the recesses and some of the areas where dirt's going to collect so you've got that that ring around the bottom of the turret uh, so we'd have it all running in and around there all over the engine deck as well uh, just showing here the burnt sienna technique over a light uh, wood color gives you a very nice wood grain texture and it looks the part so we're just doing that now and as you can see it, you don't have to touch that the the black gives you your eye sort of goes to it thinking it's metal i don't know why but if you painted that silver it looks less like metal than than painting it rubber black does and then going forward we can work more on those rubber black bits at the minute i'm just leaving them the base color but if you actually then go over with some more oils and, and work on it you'll um you'll start to make it look more like metal more flat sided slabs of uh, of metal that give us a nice flat surface to uh, get some streaking going so again all we do is we get a run of oil paints down there and then a big wide brush and that brings all of we just drag it down in the um in a very vertical way and that gives us the streaking effect you can't see it now it's when it dries is when it dries and all that thinner pulls back you start to get this and it's starting to look like a worked surface it's you've got to think what we're trying to put in there is it's natural patina it's it's natural dirt so it's it's dust with rain marks cutting through it it's dust with hand marks all over it with the crew trying to gr jump on there it's all kinds of uh things that you can think of knocking the side of it from it coming from america to get into uh, russia and then once in russia i mean you know god only knows what could uh, happen to it so that's what we try and do and i'm just all i'm doing is the basic line of colors we've basically got a couple of greens a black a white a gray and two browns a dark brown and um a sort of orangey brown i'm just mixing those colors in the palette to however i feel i want them to look and i'm just working them into the surface letting them dry coming back the next day chucking in some more cutting through what was there before putting splashes here there and everywhere thinking about what would naturally happen so at the back here you know stuff getting thrown off the tracks for whatever reason so i've put a, a bit of raw umber in there just to 
uh, where I've put some thinner and I'm going to streak that up. Who knows why that's there, but it looks very natural. Um, and then we blend it all back. That flat brush is what's doing the work. Can't emphasize it enough. It, it's, it's all about, it's not about the placement with the small brush. It's about this now, this wiping away and blending. That, that's what does all the work and gives us a very um, nice texture. That's the feeling. And when I say texture, it's more of a visual texture. If I see, <laughs> I was sort of trying to get a bit, um, bit descriptive here with my language, but that's the feeling. It's, it's meant to give the eyes something to look at and lock on to. But um, when I'm mentioning texture, there shouldn't be anything you can feel there. It's not meant to be rough. And these caps here are for fuel and for oil being put in and maybe even water. But what I wanted to emphasize here again is the sort of crap that builds up around that and, and the, the rubbish that can get in there and the grime. So I'm going in there with, with dirt. It's, this is like the, um, the, the, the bottom of the oil wash, if you, if you want. When all the thinners have gone, you get this sort of um, residue. I'm just getting that, getting a kind of mucky feel and chucking it in and around there to try and give it the exact feel of what I want. And it, it's quite effective sort of forcing it in and around the cap and then I can go in with a little bit of thinner if I want and um, tone that down a bit. So um, another thing that you can see there is you've got the thinner out and around it. You can see it's staining the area. Um, uh, you can also, before you actually apply the oils, go into these areas with just straight thinner and wet the area, then add the oils to it and then it's already sort of a bit fluid. And again, trusty wide brush comes in and I've got a number of sizes um, you can go from the uh, rather narrow, but still wide brushes with a squared off end. You've got some at an angle and then you've got the very, very wide brush as well. I've got a hair that's worked into there. So I'm going to try and get those out. The trusty tweezers that look good, but aren't quite as good as you think they are when you try and grab something like this. This is where cheap tools don't quite work. If these were Tamiya uh, or, or better, I would have grabbed that straight away, but... <laughs> the ends quite, aren't quite, uh, quite as together as I would have liked. So there you can see now, I'm catching some of that thinner that's out and around there, and now I'm just wicking it off and blending it away. And this is how you get the most natural feel. I can't emphasize it enough. That's what we're going for. And uh, we don't need to worry about learning all kinds of different techniques and dark arts and all this. It's very, very simple stuff. And all this is doing is building on what we've done before. And then we'll continue to build on this going forward. And that's all you need to worry about. It's, it's not difficult. It's not expensive. But it does. it's a technique you need to learn. And it does take a little bit of time uh, to get your, your head around it and to get the idea and to kind of get the subtlety. That's the other thing. It's very easy to overdo this and, and you just don't need to. Um, I can only describe it as layers. If you just think that you just keep adding layers, little and often, as you go through, and it will slowly build up. And that's exactly what's happened on the re real vehicle. When they turn up, they're painted in gloss paint, shiny and look absolutely brand new. As they go forward and get used and get covered in dust, that makes them look matte for a start. Then things start to eat into the dust and then it starts to sit then into the, the metal and it even etches itself into the paintwork a little bit. That's what you need to try and do. That's how you try and um, replicate that, sort of to scale, really. I'm not talking about scale effect. So now it's time to work on the running gear, which I've left separate. And that's something you can do. Uh, you can do it all together and bring it in, or you can keep it separate and, and have your running gear done first, then go up onto the hole and then the turret. We can do it all in one go, it doesn't matter. So all I'm doing here with, again, a, a brown wash, lots of thinner, and just caking it on. And you may think, well, we went to all that effort to get those, uh, those rims perfect, and now we're just covering them in mud. Uh, this will wick back, and believe me, um, you cannot hide poor paintwork with weathering. 
you really I can't emphasize again enough how how you need to start with everything painted perfectly because then it will show in the final weathering you may not see all of it but you'll see enough for it to show through and look the part so you really want to try and make sure you're getting clean finishes um, and then when you apply your weathering you don't need to worry about it and you'll find that naturally it will show through the areas that um, that look right we get it on planes as well sometimes if you've got a, a white walled tail wheel for instance on German aircraft spend ages getting this white wall painted on the wheel then you put a load of dust on it but when you wipe the dust away and you wipe the oils away and it all dries off you'll still see that white rim if it isn't there or it's put on wonky or it's painted by hand it will show up then so that's that's the point i'm trying to uh trying to make so getting around the back of the vehicle here we've going on with the washes again and now adding them to the tracks so it's just a brown wash Again, it's the same brown wash. Sometimes I do it a bit different for tracks, but at the minute I'm, I'm just using the same wash all in and around um, the running gear and up onto those uh, sponsons underneath, but not worrying too much about that. And the look I'm going for here is I'm thinking in Russia, and I have no idea why, but for some reason it gives me the feeling of a, of a kind of reddy earth tone. Uh, so a red brown, not a dark brown, it's a reddish brown. So for that... Uh, again, Burnt Sienna is, is taking the lead on the paint colours here. Uh, and also Burnt Umber, which is a good little good little oil paint that I've uh, added into the mix. I didn't have it before. It, it's a good sort of in-between tone. It's like an orangey version of Raw Umber, uh, so it's quite good. And that's taking us to a reddish tone. And um, I've just got that feeling in my mind. I don't know why. Wherever this is in Russia, that's the colour of the, the soil. So that's what we're working on. And we're bringing everything up from that, that colour. So once this wash is totally on all of the running gear, we let that dry and um, kind of work back so we can see what we've done. And as you can see on the, the rest of the tank, once it dries off, it gives that dusty look. And that's what we need to get to so we can see what we've got. If you try and do it wet, you, you've got no idea what's going on. And again, you just saw there with the flat brush, any uh, any areas that we don't want this to be on, we can wick it off now. If it goes up onto the side of the hole, just blend it up like we were doing before. And obviously the high polished areas before the oil dries, we just want to wipe them off to keep them silver because they will have a shine to them. We're starting to bring this in now. We're, we're getting close to it. So now we're going to add some heavy pigmented oils at the back there. And what I mean by that is it's, it's quite a heavy mix in the, in the wash. It's not much thinner. So we're just going in there and this will leave a kind of quite a bit of pigment. And it will look muddy, but it will look like dried mud. So again, I'm just picking areas now where I want that to be in at the back of the running gear. And that'll just help build up. And what we've already got there, you may be able to see in the background, is that kind of dusty look, that reddish soil colour. It, it dried back, and you can see it on the front of the bogies as well. That's where we're coming from. You need to put that down first, and then you can go on and add a bit of this mud. And then all in and around the back there, where it would have obviously kicked up and be, it'd be in, in an awful state back there, regardless of even if it's only driven a, a few miles because that's where it all flings off the track and gets stuck underneath. And again, because we've got no fenders, we want to have it kicking up the back of the uh, hole there as well, and all in and around where the, uh, the... This is the outlet scoop, so this is where the exhaust outlet is. I'm guessing, again, we'd get some collection of dust up in there, but maybe not too much, because the exhaust fumes are going to be blowing that out and giving a constant flow going the opposite way, so it should blow a lot of the rubbish away. And again, just blending up onto the uh, parts of the hole, keeping everything in. But again, you've got to tell the same story. You've got to keep everything in relation to itself. So uh, if you've already blended on that, you don't want to then just chuck a load of oil on there and leave it. So then just keep blending it up and you'll, you'll get a natural kind of story coming out of it. it sounds very uh, highbrow, all of this, but <laughs> it's not meant to be not really trying to tell a story but i'm just thinking about the eye you know when you look at it your eyes will pick out something that looks weird so if you try and keep to the narrative of what we're trying to do with the model it'll all 
pull itself together and look quite good. And again, now working back on the rear section of this hole, that again is an area where a lot of mud and, and detritus and stuff's going to be chucked up onto it. So we want to make that a bit heavier back there as well. And now I'm just going around with a final wash on some of the running gear and uh, that will start to get us to where we want to be. We've got a bit of the uh, mud up on the front as well on that uh, transmission cover and now we're starting to get there. So it's time just to have a look at what we've done and how it's dried off and uh, add a few small finishing touches. <coughs> now this always happens with a Sherman with me and I've got no idea why. I always lose one of the lenses for the lights at the front. I've built three Shermans, it's happened every single time. I just don't know how I, uh, how I do it. But anyway, we got one glued in and searched as much as I could. I could not find the other lens that I dropped somewhere. So I'm just going to add a bit of PVA glue to create a lensing effect. It's not perfect and it looks nothing like the clear part on the other side, but it, it's good enough. So glue and glaze is the product I'm using from Deluxe Materials. And this is just kind of a very... Uh, thick PVA glue and what we can do with that on a cocktail stick is put that in the hole and kind of create a film that covers the gap now you need a little bit more but you can see it's nearly done it it will uh, kind of bind together and um, with the tension surface tension it will just stay there flat like that as it dries it will dry as a clear film and look like a uh, see-through light so there we go, that brings this build to an end. So we've got a white background now for the photos. So I'll leave you with those. As always, thanks for staying tuned. Hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this two-part build series. Uh, this is part of a larger series where there is a playlist. So this is basic armor modeling. It's a whole series that's running endlessly at the minute. We've got many builds coming and it's a weekly upload on Thursdays. Uh, so next week we'll be looking at the uh, an old school Tamiya kit that I kind of bring back and we'll, we'll be looking at the um, Africa Core colours, the, the new range from Tamiya so uh, stay tuned for that one um, if you like what you see and you haven't already do consider subscribing uh, please give the video a like let me know your comments down below and if you want to support the channel there's a few links down below where you can do that and I'll see you in the next video